Hello, good evening, everyone. It's great to be here. Thank you, Mehdad and Amir, for inviting me. Um, obviously, my presentation is going to be very different because I am a best-selling author, a publisher. We've helped more than 100 people become bestsellers. We write business books to position you as an expert and an authority. I also am one of the leading coach training companies in North America, where I help women take their past, their skills, their knowledge, and package it into purpose, power, and profit. And after the COVID situation, things really started changing for us in a dramatic way. And so the publishing part of our company, we put it on pause for a little bit, and we just pivoted our entire business and decided to teach women exactly how to take their knowledge, their skills, and package it into an online program. Our Facebook group went from 80 members to almost 1,200 within a one month period of time. And the amount of money we're generating, it has been my best year so far in all the years I've been in business. So COVID, unfortunately, is a terrible, terrible disease, but it's been super remarkable for us. My topic today is fear versus faith. And it's been a subject that has come up so often in the conversations because the quarantine, the COVID, children at home, anxiety, depression has been such a phenomenal um, subject and it's riding everybody. People don't know this. It's times are uncertain. They don't, they don't understand the numbers, what's happening out there in the world. Are their kids going to school? Can you hug this one? Can you not hug this one? Am I allowed to go to a restaurant? All of these factors that are, you know, happening right now. And so let's talk about faith versus fear. And I don't actually mean faith as in what religion are you following? Faith versus fear when we make decisions is based on, am I too scared? To make a decision or will I make a decision based on opportunity and possibility and I'm going to share with you a story that uh, about my son and my son and I we talk uh, all the time he doesn't live with me he's been married for six years so he lives in Markham and when he's driving around he'll, he'll always call me and we'll catch up and we'll talk and you know all kinds of stuff like that and, you know, he's asking me about how's business and what's going on. And he's like my biggest fan, my biggest supporter. Now, in my family, I've had a very big gap between my kids. So my oldest is 32. My youngest is 15. So there's like a generation gap in between this millennial versus like Gen X or Gen Z. Or I don't know what they call these kids these days. And so he's on the phone with me and he tells me, he goes, you know, I, I feel sorry for my siblings a little bit because they're being raised by a different mother. Now, when I was raising him, I was a stay-at-home mom. I was helping my husband in his business. I was the homeschool mom. All the potlucks and the pool parties happened at my house. And so the mom who raised him was making homemade bread and jam and playing outside. And, and this mom who's raising the youngest is like, international best-selling author, global influencer, and I hire everyone to do everything. Everything is delegated in my life. So I said to him, I said, uh, do you think your mother, that woman who raised you, would have been able to do what I'm doing today? And he said, no, she wouldn't have. And so I want to really start out with that. Most of us are immigrants. We are, you know, we've either left a different country we're learning a different language. Maybe English is your second or third language. You had to upgrade your skills, all of these things that are factors and with the quarantine COVID situation. And so when you decide, you know, I, where you? am I making decisions from? The fact is you cannot mm -hmm. create mm -hmm. a future from where you are. are. Mm -hmm. And so, you cannot make a create a new future from where you are today. And here's the reason why. Where you are today, in this place, in this time right now, the only way you can make a decision to move forward is from your history, is from your past, is from everything that you have learned from whatever you've already experienced. So in order to create something new, something transformational, something that is unrecognizable, you need to come from the future. 
in 10 years time, what would I be doing? Who am I? Who's around me? And then hire a mentor that is walk the path to say, hey, don't do that. I tried that. Doesn't work so well. And so a lot of us are so fear-based, we actually don't take a chance. So I'm going to show you five common, not so obvious ways that fear works to limit our potential. Number one, you procrastinate. And so procrastination is a really interesting phenomena. So it's almost like you have this version of you and you say, oh my God, on Monday, I'm going to do this thing. On Monday, I'm going to do it as if Monday will actually come, right? So fear lives in the starting because starting means one of two things are going to happen. You'll either do that thing or you'll fail. So failure can be scary. Now, I can talk for myself. I was the 97% girl, okay? So I, would, I had 97% in all my subjects, all during school. And when I would come home, my dad would say, what did you do with the other 3%, honey? So in my mind, I always thought I wasn't good enough. So when I transformed my life into entrepreneurship, I had to learn to fall in love with failing. Because I can tell you, entrepreneurship is all about failing. And then every once in a while, something works, okay? Number two, you create this awesome big, let's call it a big hairy goal. You create this big goal and then you wait for the magic to happen. And so you're so scared to take action because this goal is so big and you're thinking to yourself, how am I ever going to eat this entire big gorilla? And so the fear paralyzes you. So what you want to do is you want to come up with small, tiny, incremental steps, and then you give yourself permission to take those incremental steps, okay? Number three, you've got your goal, you've hired your mentor, everything is fine, working, but then you let emergencies get in the way. Oh, uh, I got to put out this fire. Oh, this one needs something. Oh, that happened. Oh, COVID happened. And so you get into all of these, I know I wanted this big goal, but all of these emergencies came up. And so the solution to that is really, really easy. The solution to that is you make your goal the priority in your life. And no matter any of the emergencies come up, you tell your people and you train your family and you say, I know you need me. All of you are very important to my life, but I have to get this thing done because so many of you, you will keep your word and you will honor your word to other people, but you don't honor your word to yourself. And when you don't take action and you don't do that, fear overtakes you and then resentment builds and then you don't take the step to action. Number four, you focus on the judgment of others. Oh my God, what are people going to say? You know, uh, are they going to be happy? What's this one going to do? And you don't want to, you know, have other people's disapproval. So you want to avoid that because you're a nice girl, you're a nice guy. And so when people are like, let's go to the movies, let's go to the golf game. Hey, we're having a barbecue. You drop everything and you go and you leave your dreams behind because you don't want to unbalance the status quo, okay? And you, you just like, you don't want to be judged by other people. And number five, you actually forget to have fun. You forget to have fun and you forget that our lives are just this giant, amazing, audacious science experiment. That's what we're doing here. And if you just take it easy, lighten up a little bit, have some fun, you're going to realize that, oh my God, this is like such a wonderful thing I'm doing. Okay. And so I don't, I want to make sure that I am really honoring the time and sticking to my 15 minutes, but the best thing you can do is step into faith, step into possibility, step into opportunity and say, I want this thing so badly. And for me as a business strategist, I love, love success. And money loves speed and success loves speed. If you want to write anything down, write those two things down. Money loves speed, success loves speed. And I coined a phrase, FFF, fail forward faster. Okay, the faster you fail, the faster you're going to find that thing that works, the faster you're going to find that thing that is like, you will get your goals, you'll serve people, 
you'll have a great time, you'll be able to create impact and influence, and you will finally make that money that you were dreaming of, okay? So adopt a growth mindset, be flexible, and really like wake up in the morning and say to yourself, I forgive myself for everything I did and didn't do. I forgive myself for everything I did and didn't do. My past is over and I am here today. I woke up today. What's the opportunity? What's the possibility? And then turn all of your shoulds into musts. Like stop saying, I should, I should. Just say, I must do this. I'm going to do it. I must do this. I'm going to do it. And have some fun. So that's my presentation for today. We'll open up the mic if you have any questions. I'm here. I'm your mentor, and I'm here to answer all of your questions. Well, Fatima, Fatima, thank you so much. This was this was great. So, what, what, you mentioned about FFS. Sorry, what was that? Stand FFF, for? fail forward faster. Triple oh, F. Fail forward faster. Okay. Uh, Fatima, you said uh, money, love, what, and then money, love, okay. speed. <laughs> Success loves speed. Yeah, speed. you gotta you gotta be fast. The more you think about it, the more you procrastinate, the money goes to your neighbors, the money goes to your in-laws, your outlaws, your cousins. Okay, you gotta be like in the Lamborghini driving this car and money just shows up because you're serving. So yeah, speed. So you said money you, loves speed, and then uh, the second statement was success. success. Success loves speed. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any remedy for people that do, they do procrastinate and how to how they can go about uh, addressing that internally? Yes, I think that a really good way is like a limiting belief. Procrastination is first of all you need to get to the root of your procrastination. Like, what's the underlying message here? Okay, why are you procrastinating? And time to reflect and say what's really going on here. I said I would go to the gym, but I'm not going to the gym. I said I would write my book, but I'm not writing my book. I said I would make that phone call, but I'm not doing it. What is that underlying thing that's keeping you more committed to staying comfortable? And I'm gonna tell you something about being comfortable. Whether it's 20 pounds overweight, or not writing the book, or not doing your sales call, or not asking the girl to marry you, whatever that thing is, being comfortable is one of the most dangerous places to be because you, um, life is like a mountain. Imagine a mountain and we're all climbing the mountain. When you get comfortable and you stop climbing, you actually don't stay in the same spot. You actually start sliding down and then everybody moves ahead of you and then you wake up in five years and 10 years and you say, well, I was 20 pounds overweight, now I'm 40. I should have had my kids 20 years ago, now I'm still single. That book, I would have written five books by now. So, and when you find that underlying thing on why you're procrastinating, you won't procrastinate anymore because there's an underlying fear of why I'm staying comfortable. Am I making sense? Did I answer your question? Yes, for sure. Thank you. Awesome, great question. Thank you so much. Okay, who else? I'm here. You got me. Use me. Get the coaching you want. Fatima, <laughs> you're always so motivating. I will really take from you everything. No, I want to ask you so much, but I don't know where to start and where to end. <laughs> well, you know what? You can just hire me. Like I could become your coach you and go. we could talk. We could talk every week and you can crash your goals and smash through all your limits. And next That's year when we're talking, you will be unrecognizable. There you go. I would have a mustache and a beard and the whole thing. Oh, no. It's <laughs> so much more than just that. Kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just like Amir. Amir is sporting a nice, handsome mustache of now. Course. Of course. And this is not September. November, sorry, it's not November. You guys don't get, <laughs> don't get used to it, okay? <laughs> Shame it soon. <laughs> well, thank you so much, everyone, for your generous listening. I love Piton. I'm committed to your success and growth. And I'm always thrilled and honored to bring you some, uh, you know, soft skills, powerful skills, transformational skills, and everything in between. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Every Sorry. time you, you're bringing us something new, never gets old. You, you always have new stuff. 
That's great. Thank you, Amir. Yeah, Thank you. Very... Especially since you know me for still a long time. At least I'm not bored boring you yet. No, no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I always learn new stuff and that's that's interesting. You have so much to offer. Uh, it never gets old. And I would publicly like to say thank you to Amir Puyan for your amazing video that you sent me and oh. testimonial about who I am. We used it in our launch and we broke through every single um, goal we set. It was an unbelievable launch and uh, I shocked myself. Let me just tell you, I shocked myself. So I was just telling the truth. You mentioned that you're an author and you also publish. So is there any... Uh, short and not very lengthy and short uh, book that you recommend for goal setting, procrastination, uh, and things you just talked about? You know, there's a really cute little book. It's called Why Two. Um, and it's, it's the shortest book you will ever, ever find. Let me get you the author. I'll just walk over to my, to my thing right now. And um, let's see if I can find it. It is a very, very, very short book. And it is the shortest, most amazing book you can ever find. It's called You Too. Okay? You Too. You too and the tagline is a high velocity formula for multiplying your personal effectiveness in quantum leaps. I'll say that one more time. So U squared and a high, yeah, I'll put it right here. So you, can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah, just one sec. Mm. Yep, I'll hold it. Okay. Is it your book? Okay, and the author is Price Pritchard. PhD. Price, Price who? Price Pritchard. Richard. Yeah. P R I T C H E double T P H D. Got it. Um, and it is an absolute remarkable book. And it's thin, it's very, very small, and it is power packed. Really? But remember, knowledge is completely useless without implementation. Right? So I find that a lot of people will like watch my videos and come on my free trainings. And they'll go away and they'll get some kind of momentum. But the way you get results is by hiring a coach. Now, it doesn't have to be me. It can be any other coach in the world. What the coach does, it, the coach holds your feet to the fire. Okay? So the coach will say, okay, what are you promising this week? You're promising ABC. Fantastic. When we meet next week, I say, did you do ABC? You either say, yes, I did, or you say, no. If you say, yes, great, awesome, congratulations. What goal are we setting for next week? If you didn't, what happened? What's the underlying thing? Let's figure it out. And now are you re-promising? And so you are held so accountable that your results start multiplying. Because in real life, when you don't have that accountability and you're not paying for it, you're not invested, other things always get in the way. So for myself, I always hire a minimum of one, sometimes two coaches. Like right now, I've got two coaches. I know where I'm going. I'm breaking the seven-figure mark. I'm, and I'm heading there, and we're almost there now. Right. So that's what – the best coaches always hire a coach because we want to show up for our clients in a, in a better way. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Uh, Fatima, do you remember the other day you were talking about the accountability partners? Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, it was not long ago, right? And yeah. I was thinking to myself, geez, I, I, I need to have an accountability partner. And believe it or not, a couple of uh, days after that, the universe sent me an accountability partner. And we are, we are checking with each other every week uh, what, what are the things that we want to achieve. And we're, that, that was amazing. And it's, it's isn't, amazing. That, isn't that fantastic how as soon as you're open to it and as soon as you make an intention, the universe will conspire to give you exactly what you want. Like, so you are vibrating at that level and boom, it arrives without work. 
That's amazing. Con <laughs> congratulations. That's phenomenal. Phenomenal. And and you guys should really push each other. That's what we're trying Thank to do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Fatima. It was great as usual. And we always get uh, messages from that and motivation. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.